All right, guys, I'm going to grab the screen. Uh, so we've got like 12 questions, but we've only got one topic to top of, talk about out of all 12 questions. Whatever could it be, Bradley? Google business websites. What? The whole, the whole SEO industry is in a fray about this, and it's or the local SEO industry is anyways. And uh, guys, it's SEO. Shit changes. Get used to it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm really sad to see them go too, because I love Google business websites. I truly do. I think they're phenomenal. I've used them very, very extensively in all of my optimization tactics for the last several years, and it's effective. And I can prove that it's effective, but all of that is moot now. It's obsolete. Google's sunsetting them. They're going away. So, but instead of everybody freaking out, take a deep breath. And it's funny because, you know, I, I try not to bite people's heads off <laughs> for asking me this question because I get it. People are concerned and they want the answer. And I'll grab the screen in a minute, but we're going to look at the same question posted 12 different times, just worded differently, uh, which is what do we do? Right. Uh, and so what I'm saying is um, I'm sad to see them go, but you know, this is SEO. Like we, things change. Everything evolves. It's constantly a moving target. We have to evolve with it. So we will find another opportunity to, to optimize and spam, et cetera. I think the perfect uh, substitute for the Google business website is the ID page because the ID page I've been talking about for several years is really becomes the fourth component of the tier zero assets. I've always talked about three tier zero assets or the Holy Trinity of the local entity, right? I always say that kind of tongue in cheek. And that is the organic side of things is a self-hosted site. The map side of things was the Google business profile. And the Google business website was a bridge that connect connects organic to maps. How do I prove that to people? Well, because it is a website URL that you create in the Google Maps platform. The Google business website cannot rank in Google Maps. It's a website URL. So it ranks in Google search, right? Not Maps. But it is a website that is built in the Maps platform. So therefore, it is a connection between organic and Maps. Full stop. And if it's a service area, or excuse me, a storefront business a, uh, a, or a business with a published street address, you can tell because at the bottom of the Google business website, there's a map and it's not an embedded Google business map. It's just a map image. Like it looks like an image and you click on it and it opens up in maps. So again, it's a connection that connects organic to maps um, through a Google property. But uh, so that, I've always liked it. I've always used it. I've used it very, very extensively. And um, in, in many cases, I've actually ranked the Google business website, sometimes even over the money site. I'll demonstrate that here in a moment. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, things change. And so when I talk about the ID page, those three components I mentioned before, I have mentioned over the last few years that an ID page can become the fourth component of the local entity because it really truly is when optimized properly can become or should become the entity home, so to speak, because it validates or verifies, corroborates, provides agreement for all of the entity information. And it, it's our way of being able to partially control data that is fed into the semantic web, okay? Which that's what the ID page is for, unique resource identifier to corroborate or validate entity information. Is that clear? So that's why we can use that to kind of manipulate the data um, and reinforce, corroborate, provide agreement for all of that kind of brand and entity information, product services, who they serve, where they serve, Etc. You know what I'm saying? So all of that stuff is is important. But um, because the Google business website is going away, then the ID page, in my opinion, is a good substitute. It's not a Google property, but it becomes very, very powerful when done properly. Now we lose the ability to be able to create posts. I mean, we can still do posts with Google business as far as I know. Um, so far, as far as I know, we'll still be able to do updates, Google business posts, but they just won't have a website to be published to anymore. We'll have to use those stupid share URLs. So be it. It's still a Google property. If you link it out with Google Business Posts using the CTA button, uh, or even just a contextual link within the post body, um, it's a Google property. The Google bot is going to crawl it. So it helps to assist with discoverability and all indexing in some cases. Um, so all of that, I think, is still going to be valuable. We're just going to lose that organic asset that was connected to Maps via Google Business Profile, which sucks, but it is what it is. So the, uh, in my opinion, you know, obviously a clear... Uh, substitute could be the G site. So, right, sites.google.com. That's different than the Google business website. However, uh, there's some challenges with that. And there's also, you know, the Google business website, you, you, you can't embed that anymore. You can embed ID pages if they're, you know, hosted the way that we host them. Um, there's no RSS feed, et cetera. There's uh, the G sites 
by the way, I'm not saying don't use G sites. People certainly can. I've even talked about that in our mastermind or in our thread that there's multiple threads in our mastermind about this already. Uh, but I, I, I posted a comment about that. You know, we used to use G sites very extensively before the Google business website was even a thing. And then I kind of shifted to the GB website because it was integrated directly with maps, as I've already described today. Uh, but now that that's going away, should we reincorporate G sites? Yes, we should. It's a Google property. But I think the third component to make up that holy trinity of the local entity should be the ID page. Personally, I've got it's going to require some testing, guys, to determine really what is the best avenue. My assumption is the ID page will be more powerful as an entity component than a G site. Um, that's, again, my assumption. I will have to prove it out through testing. But uh, that is where I'm, I plan on in, incorporating the ID page more aggressively into kind of what I call the entity home and make that a tier zero asset instead of a tier one asset. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but anyway, let me grab the screen. Oh, and by the way, I started to say, I, I don't mean to, I try not to bite people's heads off, but like this happened and I got 25 emails and 1500 fucking PMs. <laughs> on various platforms with people asking like what do we do what do we do and it's like okay guys first of all take a deep breath we've got a couple of months to figure things out number two i don't have the answers the moment that google uh announces something i've got to work through it too you know what i mean and uh number three please understand that anybody that posts a pm question to me like and and i always get the same thing just a quick question yeah but it's just a quick question from you and 13 you know, 30 other people, that just a quick question turns into hours of me answering the same damn question over and over and over again. So please allow me to answer it in a more public setting such as this, where I can address it one time instead of dozens and dozens and dozens of times. And so anyway, hopefully that's clear. I understand people need uh, are, are freaking out. They want to make sure that they're optimizing and their clients don't suffer and all that. And that's fine. But we've got a little bit of time. So take a deep breath, relax. We'll figure it out. We'll provide a solution, uh, a workaround, et cetera. So hopefully that's clear. So let's go ahead I and actually, jump in and take, go ahead. I actually had to laugh. Like if you share, I share the screen here, like the recommendation is to have a Wix, Squarespace, GoDaddy, Google Sites, Shopify, yeah. WordPress, or Weebly site. Yeah. So it's quite interesting. I think it's actually quite a, a nice opportunity um, that is coming like soon on the whole front. Um. I'd have probably saved that up for the mastermind. Yeah, well, I, I would like to say uh, one thing, because that very good, Chris, by the way, because you're on to something. And um, I can reveal this here. But it, it's fine. It, uh, but one of the things that we jumped on immediately with my my partner, Harry, now at TreeCare HQ, was once, once we saw this as well, we said, well, how can we use our directory outreach process to contact those tree contractors that that is their website, is the GB website? And there's quite a few. It's not a huge number, but uh, I think out of, I can't remember off the top of my head, I think out of over 3,000, I can't remember what the numbers are because Harry's the one that pr processes the lead uh, prospect lists and all that now. But um, uh, let's see what I'm going to, um, he, uh, I can't remember what the percentage is. It's not a very large percentage, but out of the volume of contacts that we had, I think we we're something like 900 contractors that were using the Google business website as their website. Don't you guys understand that is a perfect opportunity to make sales in your business for your agency, right? Go scrape, use outscraper.com. That's what we use. Go, go to outscraper.com. It's pay as you go. It's not a subscription. Go fund it with some credits, put a hundred bucks in credits in there and go scrape one industry state, do, do the entire country if you can and get a huge list of contractors or companies, excuse me, in that particular industry, sort and filter the list and go into the website section and use the find function in Excel to go uh, find all with dot business dot site or business dot site. Boom you'll have a list of all of the contacts or companies that are using the Google business website as their primary website. Now you've got a, a targeted outreach campaign that you with, by the way, you can link to the Google business or excuse me, the Google help file that Chris was just showing on the screen in your email outreach. Like, Hey, have you seen this? You, or you've probably already seen this and link to it, right? That means your website's going away. We have a solution specific for your industry. Would you like to talk? Right. And again, going back to what the kind of product is that we I've spent the last eight days trying to develop is a simple website that we can sell for no setup fee and all we charge is hosting and maintenance. Uh, but 
that's perfect because it can be deployed very quickly, very easily without any expense. It's a templated site that is duplicatable. All I got to do is clone the damn thing, change out the, it's all done through custom values. So I can fill out a CSV sheet or a form and boom, the entire site is now new for a new contractor. Done. No setup fee, nothing. Do you think we will get a lot of uptake on that for those contractors that are using GB websites as their primary website? That's a yes. So uh, think about that, guys. There's opportunity in change when it comes to SEO. Always. There is always opportunity in change. Sometimes it sucks for us. I get it. But there's always a way to make money from it, too. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. All right. Thanks, Chris, by the way, for jumping in on that. Sure thing. Sure thing.